everyone, welcome to the next part of the Black Widow mod series. Today we will finally begin to work on the MGN 12 rail stuff and as you can see at the beginning of the video I printed a few parts including this bracket which mounts underneath the heat bed like so and has two slots for the MGN 12 blocks here and the belt attachment here and this will basically allow me to mount the MGN 12 rails on the Y axis and these are just clips that go on here on the extrusions I'm sorry the rails and then it goes on the extrusions like this as well this is just a tool that you're supposed to use for alignment I printed six of these but I think that's overkill anyway it doesn't really matter that's why I did it so we will begin right away with the installation of these two 500 millimeter rails on the Y axis I haven't figured out what to do with the X axis yet but I'll get to that in a second after I'm done with the Y axis as for the parts that I have used I'll link them in the description below both of these are not mine this is someone I'm not I'm going to butcher his name so I'm not going to pronounce it but yeah I'll link it in the description below and this is just an alignment tool I found on Thingiverse so yeah both will be in the description below and as for the X axis well it depends if I design my own, I'll upload it into Thingiverse and link it in the description below and otherwise whatever I use if it's available I'll link in the description below. So I now installed the Y bed here and as you can see the rails are properly aligned etc. And everything is moving fine on this axis, I have tested it and also I relocated the homing switch to uh, for it to allow the added height because because of the height of the rails I'm losing a little bit of Z space here but everything is working smoothly ish there were a few problems when aligning this with the rails but overall that wasn't a huge deal and everything was working smoothly but somehow I have no idea this and so switch sensor stopped, start, stopped working uh, well, I don't know why I'm slurring my words here and yeah it's not detecting the X homing I didn't even touch that so yeah it makes no sense why that failed but I did check all the wiring everywhere everything is wired up properly so it's not like a connector got loose or anything like that this sensor isn't responding to the anything metal in front of it and yeah I have no idea what the problem actually is so I'm going to replace that sensor so an update on the end stop situation I I tried to replace this with the Z end stop that I had which I didn't use because I had the VL touch when I received this printer so I received I, I replaced the the end stop with that which is which is a sensor that I know works for sure but it didn't work then even though I didn't touch anything inside the control box I reseated everything it didn't help at all and lastly since I did move the z-axis up and down a bit I thought maybe the cable inside the drag chain is bad even though it's unlikely I made another cable which yeah here it is and tried with with the both of those sensors and they didn't work either so so as usual I'm trying to eliminate by eliminating everything so at this point I've also checked the internal wiring I also as I said before I tested reseating these as well so I only possible thing at this point is that either the duet Wi-Fi is broken or the diode on this wire which is supposed to protect the duet from the 24 volts is that either one of those but since duet is a pretty high end quality board I'm assuming the diode in there is that and if that's the case well it should be pretty easy to fix so let's see I've now removed the cable and the only part that I could think of that could be damaged is this part which has a diode in here I forgot the exact spec, spec but it's basically one of these a shot key diode so to test this if it's working properly or not it's pretty simple we just have to re measure the resistance across both ways and note that and then compare it to an unused one which is most likely just fine so yeah let's just do that 
So going through this way, it's about 2.2 mega ohms. this way it's about 1.2 mega ohms well in this case it's pretty obvious that we really don't have to check this is mega ohms that's just way too high for any sort of uh, voltage it will basically if it goes through this it will be dropped to a ridiculously low level but just to be sure let's just check this as well so I'll be measuring this this way and yeah, it's about 3.5 mega ohms, which is fine. This is a diode, it's only supposed to conduct one way. If the resistance is fine through this way, then it's working. And yeah, as you can see, it's about 5.8 kilo ohms. So yeah, the issue is the diode inside this cable is somehow dead. So yeah. As the Murphy's Law says, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. This took a few days of troubleshooting to figure out, so yeah, anyway, I'll fix this issue and everything hopefully will be back to normal soon. And depending on the time that I have left, we will either do the conversion on the x-axis as well, or we'll just do the y-axis and do a test print. It really depends on the, how much time I have until Friday. I was in the process of putting everything back together and I will do it in a second but I just wanted to show you that as you can see these rubber dampeners on the y-axis have worn off so I'm going to have to fix this as well it's an easy fix it's not going to delay anything but yeah I'm just showing you that this happened as well so yeah my luck ha certainly hasn't been great so far and it doesn't work anymore and still and yeah, I still don't, don't have any idea. That diode was definitely faulty. You saw one on camera, we did check it, so I don't know what else is broken. I There is a slight chance that the end stop that I'm using right now got damaged because of that broken diode. While the, di the end stop sensor that I used for testing got damaged as well. I know this sounds like like a pretty extreme case but that's honestly the only thing that I can think of and if that's the case well I'll have to wait and see because I'll have to order replacements and stops and yeah other than that the only possibility that I see is at this point the duet Wi-Fi is broken and yeah as usual I highly doubt that and if it's damaged well I can't replace it at the moment so yeah this is the this is probably going to be the reason that this video is delayed if I can't come up with a good solution to this we will see but yeah that seems to be the situation actually I will be releasing the video today and if you want to know about that in more detail just watch the last channel update video but yeah I just want to talk about the situation so just in case it wasn't clear enough so if you remember I had the sensor it died for some on a reason that I can't explain I did a few troubleshooting steps it didn't get anywhere then I tried a different sensor as well a, a one that I know works for sure and it didn't work either and after that I did the troubleshooting and figured out the broken diode I replaced it and both of those sensors don't work either now again so one of those sensors which I know for a fact was working got damaged in the process when, with the old broken diode and the diode definitely was broken but it was broken in a way that it didn't conduct it was on the mega ohms range and yeah it shouldn't really do any harm at that high of an resistance so yeah I'm kinda I can't really figure out what the, what actually happened These sensor that we're using is basically an NPN transistor and the diode is you know it's just a shot key diode but yeah I really can't figure out what actually happened I tried to running through a few scenarios in my head like how if the duet Wi-Fi died if the sensor died if the diode died etc a few scenarios 
but I can't figure out a good reason why any of those would die and cause a chain re reaction and especially when I replace the sensor with the newer one it has to be a fault that could damage the newer sensor that I placed as well and yeah that doesn't really make any sense to me so yeah I got kind of stuck with there but still since I know for a fact now both of those sensors are dead I ordered a replacement one so I will be testing that as well but firstly I really want to figure out what happened so if you know about electronics I don't know too much just based on what I've told you just give me any ideas that you might have in the comments down below but yeah otherwise I'll try to browse the internet write in a few forums etc to figure it out I've also ordered some basically regular switches and I will be doing the testing on those just so I don't damage the newer sensor that I ordered which is a different one actually not a Sun XGL8H it's a Panasonic G8, GX uh, something like that I don't exactly remember the spec it's pretty much the same sensor Sun X is owned by Panasonic anyway so yeah, I will be doing the testing on those, you can just use the switch as a NPN transistor if you really wanted to anyway, so it should work. So yeah, still, if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below, otherwise I will be waiting for some shipment time, so... I really don't know when the next Black Widow most video will be, I, I don't have an idea, but yeah, we will see, hopefully it won't be that long. And obviously, because I don't have a working and stop sensor, I won't be able to test the MGN 12 stuff. And I can't do the upgrade on the X-axis either, because I need to 3D print some parts. I've done everything on the Y-axis, as you've known, and yeah, I'm basically stuck right now where I am. And yeah, that's pretty much it, so... Sorry for not making as much progress as I hoped, but yeah, hopefully you understand the problem. And I still hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please give me a like down below and thanks for watching.